All right, we are back, and hopefully the comments will stay up on my phone. Uh, hi, Jesse. Hey, how are you? I'm all right. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing just great. All right, cool. Oh, uh, wait, wait. No, sorry. I'm grammar. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Okay, so uh, what was I supposed to do? Something? Oh, wait, cause, but that doesn't matter. Yeah. Because it's just gonna, it's just gonna do that anyway, right? Okay, cool. So, it's all good. Um, yeah. And just to catch people up, I I noticed in the chat room that we have some some first timers here. Um, if you Ooh. haven't seen the other episodes quite yet, um, just to let you know where we are, we're developing a language for rabbits. David can tell you more about that context about why rabbits. rabbits. Um, but we have finally wrapped up on phonology and sounds and we're ready to tackle some grammar yes so uh, actually on that note so i know that the last two polls that we did on our patreon were specifically for uh orthography um yesterday we did a streaming test to kind of test out a new window configuration um, so that we could work, uh, so that, like I could work on the orthography while you could also see the um, the language document and we could do both. And I think it went mostly okay, so we'll probably try it, but we're not going to do anything with orthography this week um, because we want to kind of get the grammar more set or at least give us something to work with next week. Um, however, I did want to announce the results of the poll, which was that um, despite the fact that there was some uh, contention between the CV syllabary and the VC Abugida, uh, the VC Abugida did end up winning. So mm -hmm. this thing is going to be a VC Abugida, and it's going to go from top to bottom because, of course, it is. But um, Because why not? <laughs> however, <laughs> I did get an idea. I did get an idea. So... Um, this is just a, a, a schematic sketch right here. But imagining that we're going to have glyphs that go from top to bottom, and they're going to be combining with the vowel that comes before it as opposed to the vowel that comes mm -hmm. after it. And I thought, well, what is above a rabbit? And considering that we have a four-vowel system, right, and it's an Abu Gita, meaning one of those is going to be inherent, um, I thought we have the sun, we have the moon, and then in between we have the stars. And this could actually be um, the E vowel, the U vowel, and the schwa vowel. So the inherent vowel is actually going to be A, ah, the earth vowel. Um, nice. And uh, to give you an idea of what I was thinking, here is this rabbit here. See? Oh my gosh, that's so cute. And, the, and see, see, the vowel is the sun or the moon. And so it'll be above like that. Anyway. Nice. Obviously, not all the glyphs are going to be rabbits, but that was that was the image that spoke to me. So I'm going to kind of work with that as a starting point when we get there. Um, so yeah. Anyway. Uh, oh, and um, George asked if it was right to left or left to right, and left to right is that yeah. answer. <laughs> you know. Um, I forget what it was. It may have been in the Art of Language Invention. I wrote that Egyptian hieroglyphs could be written from left to right or right to left, which they could, and from top to bottom or bottom to top. Um, but it turns out there there is not really a lot of examples of going from bottom to top. Um, and the preference seems to be from left to right when it comes to columns. Uh, though, though it does kind of follow. So if it if they're, you know, if, if the dudes are facing, am I mirrored? Well, let's just say if they're facing this way, the columns go this way. If they're facing that way, the columns go that way. But I think our, our columns should go from left to right. Just, just to give me something, man. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> um, and just so you know, um, we have Rabugita showing up several times. However, somebody suggested it may be a Hapugita. Ooh. That was Agohiza suggested that a hapugita, hapugita. and that was good. too cute not to share. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so um, was that was that all the oh no the before stuff? Uh, I do have our sound changes here, 
Um, I added one at the beginning that's not really a sound change, it's more of an orthography change. And even though you can't tell the difference, this is, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, regular G goes to IPA G everywhere at the beginning, just so that I don't have to bother writing IPA G's over in the input. <laughs> so. Nice. <laughs> and for no other reason. <laughs> yeah. In fact, actually, gives me an idea. Could I do... Hold on. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I think I'm going to do this. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna make it so that we don't have to type those stupid characters for our prenasalized things. There. Oh, all the okay. Yeah. Right. It, it's just at the that beginning. Makes sense. It's just a rewrite rule. Uh, it's not a real rule. Uh. And just in case I forget, I'm going to do one for Engma before G as well. And there we go. Ngala Ngala. Perfect. All right. It's a little, it's a little, what do you call it? Peace of mind rule. Okay. So I'm going to increase the size on this because we don't really need to see the rules anymore. We just need to see the input and the output. There we go. All right. So, uh, what are we doing? Where are we Grammar. Going? Grammar. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Gosh. How could you forget so quickly? Grammar is so cool. That's the one thing about grammar is its coolness. I don't think that it has another thing. It's just that. It's just that it's cool. Yes. Oh, and I had other things I wanted to remember. Um, but I will... Okay. No, actually, maybe I should say this first. All right. But so we're going with a head initial grammar, right? So this is going to be, um, you know, when I say a head initial grammar, what you should immediately assume, verbs come first, uh, nouns come first, uh, Relative clauses come second. Uh, what else? Adjectives come second. Um, and then for genitival phrases, they come second as well. So, you know, the rabbit of the woods, the rabbit blue, um, prepositions on the rabbit, uh, and then saw the rabbit the tree, and uh, the rabbit who saw the tree. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. When it comes to demonstratives, what do you, or determiners, what are, what are your thoughts on determiner theory? Oh, on theory in general? No, like, you know, the, okay. where, where people, you know, the whole DP hypothesis thing in yeah. that, in the syntax garbage. Um, so whether, right. So whether the determiner is the head. Is or the head of the phrase. The, yeah. Yeah. Um, I've, I mean, like I get it in some languages, it does seem to fit nicely, but um, I I would prefer thinking of demonstratives coming from where adjectives are typically placed. Mm. All right. Where um, do you fall? I should ask. Uh, roughly in the same place, but it's more they're going to be wherever I want them to be. And, and it really across languages, there's no set pattern anyway. Um, yeah. So there's really not a great. <laughs> really it is where do you want them and i think part of it will depend on what it sounds like when we get our first determiner and noun pairing and mm -hmm. i may change my mind <laughs> yeah and then you know somebody jumps up oh but it's a yeah, everything generates a null determiner that's actually ahead and it's filled its speck of <laughs> tp or <laughs> Oh my gosh, we now have, by the way, well, people are really jumping ahead and mm -hmm. already thinking tripartite and split ergative nah. and holy cow, this is going to... Look, it's going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to evolve naturally, all right? So if we get there, we'll get there. If we don't, <laughs> we don't, all right? It's just going to happen. So um, that's... <laughs> Jason just commented, cross-linguistic study finds three dominant patterns, head initial, head final, and wherever David and Jesse say, amen. <laughs> nice. 
Okay, so so bearing that head initial stuff in mind, I did have something that I wanted to share with you that I thought could be neat. Um, mm-hmm. So it's kind of like, you know, if you're going to go out there and say, okay, we only have two codas in our language, N and S, like, you're setting something up. It's it's like it's like Chekhov putting the, the cannon on the stage in the first half, or I think it was a pistol, I don't know. At some point in time, you got to fire that thing, right? Um, right. So that leads to the the necessity or the, the potentiality, I guess, of having suffixes. And if we did, now we kind of, when we were generating roots, I think we were always thinking of roots that were basically of this shape, Nala, like Asa, is the name of an old language of mine, you know, Aka. And then maybe mm-hmm. every so often things like, you know, Nalas and Madon. Mm-hmm. Right. But, right. Um, just in case you want to see how those pop out. Mm, a lot of ah. Uh, I wanted to throw in this, uh, this idea here. All right. So let's say that in, in the old days, you could have roots that were CVC. CV, CV, right? And then, you know, CV, CV, whatever. Um, but the main point being that you could have absolutely any consonant there. And so what happened is that um, when you had a root, say like, um, oh, what am I doing? We don't have D. Come on, then. Uh, say you had a root like mal, for example. Well, Mm -hmm. at some point in time, uh, the rabbits, in their infinite wisdom, uh, decided that a root like mas is fine. A root like man is fine. But a word like mal just doesn't work. And so what they did was they threw on a copy vowel. And that's why you see a lot of words of that shape. Now, let's say that we have some sort of suffix could be an N, could be an S, whatever, right? And so what happens is that in the early days, these suffixes uh, just get added right on the top. Okay. Also, is can you scooch over on the website a little bit more? Because some of the bottom of that output lexicon is being covered by your window. So we can see down to main name is the lowest output we can see. Yeah, I guess we don't need to see the left, do we? I don't, yeah, no. All right. I'm, I'm scooching. I'm scooching. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, perfect. There we go. Okay. And we still have the apply button, which is important. Okay, so look, initially we just have these consonant clusters at the end. But then uh, something happens to break them up. We, um, you know, here we could, uh, so um, the copy vowel could be insert, inserted, but here something else could happen. So we have licit clusters there. See? Um. Oh, I guess there's a delay for you, right? Because this is a website. Sorry. Yeah, it is a slight delay, but that's okay. Yeah. So um, so that's a thing that could happen where, you know, here, just a, the epithetic vowel is added because these things can be codas, whereas mm-hmm. here the epithetic vowel is inserted first. Um, also, um, there would be, uh, shoot, what was the other half of it? All right, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to go check my uh, my notes here because I wrote them in our notes. Uh, not that. Not that. This. Oh wait, you you wrote them in our shared notes? Yeah, but I wrote them for me, not for you. Oh. I mean, you can look at them. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, not allowed. Yeah. Well, there was a really cool alternation that, um, oh no, why would the, that's not what that button's supposed to mean. How do I go back? Oh no. How do I get back to our stream? I don't know. Okay, here we go. We're we're all still right here, so at least the stream is happening. (laughs) Okay, okay, okay. All right, all right, all right. Um, But there was a way where like you could get a, a vocalic alternation um, 
in the suffix and it depends on the age of the suffix, right? So like, let's say that here, um, you inserted a schwa just to break things up, right? Mm -hmm. um, and that would end up giving you maline. But then at some later date, we have new suffixes that come after the copy vowels have already been added. Mm -hmm. And so then you get malin. Anyway, so that's just something that we need to hang on to as we proceed. Okay, um, back to the document. Oh, oh, there was one more question I actually had. Um, or just something I want to point out. We don't actually need a separate romanization for a because it's always predictable. Ah, very true. Yeah. The, the, um, the only reason I would almost argue to keep it, though, is because even though it will be predictable. Yeah, you got to pronounce it. You'd have to do a lot of thinking to get. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. To get there. Absolutely. But but yeah, it, was, it occurred to me when I was realizing that the only place ah occurs in stress position um, mm -hmm. is when it's next to a semi-vowel, a glide. Yes. So it's, you never get cha, it's always cha or cha. Right. Yeah. Anyway, mm -hmm. weird stuff. All right. Um, okay. That's our orthography section. All right. Lang time is a, here we go, head initial language. Okay, so now we get to the fun part. So here we go. Presumably at some stage, there's going to be a word for rabbit, right? Obviously. Mm -hmm. And there's, uh, what else is a, a word that is going to be very old? Very old. Well, you had already mentioned, I think, three old words because of sun, moon, and stars, and earth. Well, in earth, really, sun. those all have to be very old words. I would say earth definitely, because I mean, that, they're digging into the dirt. They're yeah, they're big. They're fans. in it. They're living in it. They're big fans. Trees, probably. Are we gonna? Are we gonna do this? Are we gonna? Are we gonna do that? <laughs> By the way, are you, <gasps> yeah. Do, I don't know, do these rabbits prefer carrots or is there something else that they prefer? <laughs> I mean, carrots and lettuce, you have to assume. Assume, yes. Now, would it be specific to carrot or would they treat all root vegetables the same? Well, that's a question that we have to ask a rabbit, isn't it? Um, it really is. And I, I don't know of any talking rabbits. Like, so I will, any, I will make it my mission to watch as many rabbit yeah. cartoons as possible. Any rabbit owners, like... Do they like turnips? What other <laughs> root vegetables are there? I don't... Parsnips. Parsnips, of course. How could I forget parsnips? And then, of course, there's all the yams and mm -hmm. things like that. I can't see them. I can't see a rabbit eating a yam. No? No. I just can't it's see It's orange it. and it grows underground. Yeah. But do we just see them as eating carrots because that's what we always give them? Like, we don't think, let's go buy a beet for my rabbit. Huh. Poor but rabbits. All they want is their beets. You never know. They could be Dwight Schrute's. Uh-oh. George says that perhaps carrots may be bad for rabbits. We need to know this. Are carrots, does anybody know, are carrots actually bad for rabbits? They're too sugary. Oh, Turbo from that dumb Sam movie. <laughs> okay, kudos on the, the name. Um, but interesting. So maybe leaves, grass, or some sort of lettuce word would actually be more important. Lettuce is so complex. I like carrot because you can see it having a word for itself. But like, lettuce is so weird. It's like a big thing. Is that coming from uh, your uh, end? It's a head. Yeah, um, I think Chris is scraping his dinner dishes right in on. the sink. So if you heard a clink, 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 <laughs> we're not hosting a dinner soiree here. Is Just he a, cleaning. Is he a fan of carrots? <laughs> um, I'm not sure he especially is. He'll eat a baby carrot every now and Are you a fan of carrots? Oh, he said yeah. Okay. Sure. He's a fan. Okay. Um, well, what do they eat? Oh, 
All right. Oh, so the carrots are like candy, the root vegetables, not weed and grasses is what Matei says. Alk agrees, mainly hay, grass, well, leafy greens. Well, let's just say pellets are straight out at this point, and pellets don't exist anymore, right? Ibag says rabbits love worms. I, I always thought they were herbivores. I don't know enough about rabbits, but they have to definitely gnaw on stuff, right? Like they have to eat hard things for yeah. their teeth, right? Yeah, you'd think that the carrot was good for that. But okay, so here's the thing. I was hoping okay. for something that was an obvious like count noun that mm -hmm. was also something that they could actually interact with. So like, you know, a sun, moon, star, they can't really interact with that. So I, I want to say, though, that, um, okay, thank you, Ibex, that was a joke, because I, for a moment, I was really shaken by the worm thing. So thank you for telling me that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> if you listened to our last episode, our, our tester yesterday, then you know that I fall for things far too quickly, because I'm like, oh, serious. And <laughs> then I remember it could be a joke. Okay, just because we treat grass, though, as a, like a non-count noun, if you were smaller and grass were around you, would you not be tempted to treat them almost like how we treat trees as count nouns? Individual blades of grass would be much bigger to you if you were smaller. Uh, yeah. That's and if you were eating them, if you're eating them one at a time, then. I mean, that's true. But I mean, you know, beans are pretty large, too. And like we can interact with single beans. Oh, wait. Bean is a count noun. <gasps> it sure is. Oh, dear. Okay, I like this idea. Okay, blade of grass. When um, Mateus had suggested leaf, uh, W. Watson stick, Alk had also said leaf. So, you know, all these are good. Stick oh, and Jason says rabbits love social security numbers. <laughs> 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 these oh amongst shadows foot they have big feet would that be i, I yeah. did my thumper immediately the thumper <laughs> mm -hmm. okay let's do um i guess this is what yeah and 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 leg when we uh i wanted to steer clear of anatomy because we need to have a, a serious discussion when it oh, gets to, yeah. to rabbit anatomy or rab anatomy i think that's how you say it Rab anatomy. Rab anatomy. Sure. Rab anatomy. Like Rab anatomy. <laughs> uh, Rab anatomy. Although I now I need to do research on rabbits Jeez. apparently because people are giving facts here. Um, Sasha Cube says that rabbits in the wild fight to the death to reinforce hierarchy. Oh yeah, that yeah. look. They only live like one to two years. Remember? <laughs> That's a lot of changing hierarchy. Um, and Roy did ask if um, how large these rabbits are, but we're assuming kind of larger than maybe our rabbits but only because yeah like at first like when the language would have started they would have been smaller right so like more didn't well, we decide they grew over the years when humans were or well, when the threats were no longer let's say it happened a bit quicker due to the substance that that mutated them but, yes the mutating substance but mm -hmm. it's like at that time you know the other rabbits still existed so mm -hmm. you know um they're definitely aware of their earlier state, right? And that idea has right. been passed down generation to generation. So let's go with tooth. Um, first, um, I'm gonna throw this out here. What I wanted to do, let's see if you're okay with this. I wanted to have um, state of verbs, meaning that um, we're just, for a lot of this stuff, the adjectives are just gonna be expressed as verbs. Um, mm -hmm. And then, so when they occur in, you know, adjectival position, it's just going to, they're just going to be relative clauses. I love that. Okay, cool. Um, so this is, this is what I want to ask ourselves. All right. Rabbit tooth, tooth rabbit. Okay. So mm -hmm. this one, how are we going to express genitives you know what shoot we need some forms here don't we we need something we need something to give us something so i got a verb here <laughs> all right i love that we need something to give us something 
You're absolutely right, David. Okay, so <laughs> um, I think that our our first word should be for uh, for our our first patron that subscribe at that level. Um, except that Veronica never told us what words she wanted. So then we have to go to the next one, who is Nick. So Nick is going to be the root for something. Should it be sleep or tooth? Are they there? Uh, Nick, are you there by any chance? And if you are, would you rather be sleep or <laughs> tooth? <laughs> How, uh, well, okay. Well, obviously Nick could be a root, but we got to add something to it since the K could not naturally yeah. originally have ended. No, it, that's okay. No, but like we'll it, it, it's going to, it's going to have a copy vowel. So yeah, yeah, so yeah. Nikki is going to be the word, uh, or the original root. Um, anyway, so yeah, we, we need to, what we need to distinguish is, uh, oh, and let's, let's leave have behind for a moment. Um, mm -hmm. sorry, we don't need caps for that. Uh, oh, right. Because it doesn't know. Oh, oh dear. So, Turbo from that dumb snail movie made a great bad pun. They maybe. are wacky rabbits, if you will, because, you know, they whack things. So something I didn't consider is that um, if it was just N-I-K, if that was the root, then when it gets its copy valve, mm -hmm. it's going to come out as Nigi because of mm -hmm. voicing. Um and I don't know that I feel like if we're going to honor somebody's name, it should be more recognizable in the synchronic state of the language. Yeah. Right. So probably. So it needs to be N-I-S-K-I. -I? Yeah. Because then it would Gemini and we'd be left with Niki. Yep. That's right. Okay. Niki. There we go. So um, let's see. They, they, they should have plenty of time to have responded at this point. Um, so I, I don't think they're there. Don't no, I don't think so. Okay. Um, okay. So Nikki, what do you think? Does Nikki feel more like a tooth, more like sleeping, or more like I don't know a, a rabbit? Uh, perhaps. Yeah. I, I think. I mean. Also, I'm gonna throw this out there. Mm -hmm. I think maybe mm -hmm. we should just have a word for a rabbit being, and then uh, verbs for you know uh, being male or female. Oh, okay. And also, I, I also wanted to throw this out there. I was thinking, who would the rabbits respect in their society? And I would think, or revere. And I would think it would be people, uh, or the rabbits that do things uh, more or better than others. And so that would be the rabbits that live the longest, because, you right. know, and the the rabbits that breed the most. Ah, uh, and if, if it's to believe with their violent nature, potentially the rabbits. The strongest, <laughs> but of course they would breed the most if they were the strongest, because everyone would want to, yeah, have fun. But uh, um, oh, I meant the one that produces the most offspring. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's what I meant too. Okay, um, Nikki. So yeah, Nikki. Does it? Is it like? What do you think? I, most people are answering the same way that I would answer, which is. And, that is tooth. tooth okay, types. there it is. All right, so let's just let's just write this up here, just so that we remember it. Uh, uh, actually, we don't know if it has a copy valor or not. Let's just leave it at that. Um, and I'm trying to make sure Nick didn't actually show up at some point. <laughs> all right. And let's leave. Um, Let's be neutral with respect to plurality at this point. All right. Mm -hmm. um, so, I don't know. Oh, my gosh. We have a word. Yeah, there we go. Tooth. Nikki, tooth. Do you all understand how exciting this is? <laughs> i got to get my other notebook. I'm feeling I need a specific notebook, and I can't find the one I want. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah. I mean, it is written here. I know, I know, but don't you feel the need to handwrite the first word? It feels good. Whatever, it's yeah. good. All right, so then let's let's do sleep, um, and then and then uh, we're we're also gonna do bite down here. That'll be a good one. Okay, sleep. Mm -hmm. Sleep has to have an awe sound. Ah. <laughs> <Aw? laughs> 
in the original form in the original so whatever it's going to change well into yeah it's modern but, form but it's original form needs to start with ah but we and can, then we'll see what happens where it changes we can keep it though um uh like okay um let's let's try it let's try that now that becomes len what does this one become that becomes lean wow that is something really it that is, becomes lean it is hard because it's a nasal oh and it's a nasal yeah coda. yeah because oh, it's a nasal raising long okay hold on let's see what uh okay that that becomes eh and then this one Oh, that becomes ad too? Holy smoke. Okay, what if... Um... This is really funny, by the way, because I'm, I'm seeing it on... I'm hearing you at the normal speed, but seeing it on, on delay, so... <laughs> seeing the yeah. ad showing up. Oh, there's Chanu. Oh, and it gets that lovely palatalization that you know that I so love. Yeah, what do you think about that? Chanu. Chanu. All right, All right. here we go. Oh, wait. Yeah, no, we have a new in the original. Oh my gosh, for a second I was like, wait, do we have a new? We have a new. Of course we yeah. have a new. Mm hmm. All right, so we're going to throw that in there for sleep. Um, let's give us. Uh, okay, let's just do bite for right now. Let's just do something for bite. Uh, unless. Gosh, that was. This is the tough thing. Um, because. Um, you, you could do bite as, as do tooth to. And I might want to save that. What's something that's really basic that's transitive? Um, eat. I mean, yeah, because you could make that some other way, but chances are you wouldn't because it's so basic, mm -hmm. right? It's just right. something that needs to happen every day. Um. <laughs> Just looking. Oh, yeah, I mean, as Senior Hagfish says... Whack. <laughs> <laughs> Although they didn't develop that ability until later. But wait, they wouldn't have had language till they had that mutation. Yeah. Therefore, they would have the ability <laughs> to whack things. <laughs> that, that is a transitive verb right there. That's true. I let's let's stick with eat for right now. Um and by the way, the, the reason I always like posit some of these is because eat could be something that's like it's an iterative iterative form of like chew or swallow or something like that. But let's just yes. let's just do a, a basic form for eat. Poor little rabbits. They don't want to wait. They're lo they're hungry little bunnies. Copico. Mm. Oh, that Copico. Back on the coffee candies. Oh, so good. Mm. Mm. Oh, that Copico. All right. Um, send me free Copico. Copico. Co. <laughs> How many times do you think you need to say it before they do that? I don't know. I don't even know if they're the Copico. Co. That's a C-O, period. I feel like you're not getting this. Sorry, I was reading a comment. <laughs> Sorry. I know I should be paying full attention to you. <laughs> But, oh, and now I've just lost it on the screen. But hmm. Chris says the ah uh, in Chanu is wrong. Um, but we ran it through the sound changer. And so. Well, feel, feel free to suggest why. Remember what the proto form is. And remember that ah is not becoming ah um, mm -hmm. at this stage. It's because it was a part of the older diphthong. So the older diphthong preserved the older vowel quality. That was why I was mentioning earlier that um, the only time you see the original ah is when it was in one of these diphthongs. Right. Um, I think somebody above, and I, oh, it was W. Watson had said Chainu. I think he was trying to write the ah. Oh, Chanu, gotcha. That's what was going on. And yeah, in that in that comment box, that probably was difficult to do. Okay. Well, but we're good. If I you think. if you want to review it, let's just go. Let's just go give it a, a teensy little review. Where does ah become ah? 
Um, it, oh gosh, I've lost my my cool little. Where does awe become ah? It happens with something on the stress thing. Um, by the way, someone suggested Kopi Co for eat. It was W. Watson suggested Kopi Co could be <laughs> the word for eat. <laughs> well, we're looking. Okay, we're looking. We're looking. Hold on a sec. The low vowel sequences become diphthongs. The mid vowel sequences become. Finally, low mid vowel sequences become long versions of the first vowel. Prenasal raising. Central vowels take on the back it's, feature immediately. I was going to say, well, number nine is where it starts. Central vowel annihilation, part one. Central vowels become front vowels when stressed. Hmm. Well, that's interesting. I think that he may be right. Uh, huh. But the palatalization occurs later. Therefore, the E would be the stress, right? Tianu. Uh, how were we doing that? That's right. That's how we were doing that. We were saying that the first one was stress. Tianu. Tianu. And then later it Chanu. became a palatalization. Chanu. Yes. Let's let's review this rule. Yeah, that's that's what's happened. <laughs> Just when you thought we had wrapped phonology. <laughs> this I mean this will, we're back. This will happen though. But yeah, this is a, this is where the rule is happening and I remember us saying this is why we did the progressive assimilation. We were like the first mm -hmm. vowel is more important. Now, it's, mm -hmm. it, of course, it would be very strange for that stressed vowel to kind of, you know. Um, so we might need to revisit this, but I don't know. I kind of like it. Tianu, Tianu, Tianu. Sounds pretty good to me. You know, as they became more relaxed on their pronunciation. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think, I mean, I think I could, I could hear it as we, as we go. Yeah. Um, so, so I guess that I don't know. I'm I'm feeling like it's fine. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, because the idea was in these two vowel sequences, they were the first part was getting more emphasis than the second. Um, mm -hmm. And but so the the only odd thing there is that the first part when they are uh, it becomes you know they become on glides but i just i don't know it feel like it can happen mateus agrees it sounds very natural thank you mm -hmm. right. and yeah yeah w watson so tianu became tianu which became chanu yeah and sasha cubes also likes chanu all right. Okay. So yeah, okay. but you know what? That was a really good spot. That was a really good yes, spot. Yes, that was super impressive. Yeah. Also, while I'm down here, since we kind of got these, I'm going to go ahead and delete these other ones just to make the document a little bit smaller. Look at all those sound changes I've used at one time or another. Yeah, I, I'm not going to lie. I was staring at some of them like, wait, how is this in our language? And then realized that they were the bullet list and not the numbers, and therefore it wasn't actually part of our language. Yeah. So yes, that's good. Okay, good. All right. I haven't gotten to that part yet. Wait, does that jump to the right spot? Hold on, this will. All right, back to this. So eat. We're going to need a root for that. Something yes, like we will. Copico. I mean, it could at least be part of it. That would be kind of weird to have a three-syllable root for such a basic thing. I mean, not totally weird, but no, don't, um, don't, don't, don't license my nonsense. Um, <laughs> it can be no, it'll be shorter. Uh oh. Hang on. Jesse's. Was it me? Gosh, I hope it's not me. Jesse has disappeared. 
Um, is it me? Somebody tell me. Say something. I have to, I may have to call back. Okay. It was you, not me. Yeah, yeah. Um, everything sort of stopped for a minute. Um, right now it's slowly catching back up, but I may need to... Um, okay, other people have noticed the stream has paused, so it's something in the bigger internet sphere. Am I still moving? Okay, I'm still moving yeah. just fine. I'm all frozen and weird, but yes. Yeah. <laughs> Um, <laughs> and it's so helpfully saying it's Jesse, it's me. I'm killing it, David. <laughs> okay. 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 We can hear both of you, but I can't see the screen. Okay. Well, I mean. Yeah, I am lagging like crazy. I'm weird and frozen. Um, everybody just started their meetings. There are 240. They're 240 meetings. You know 241, because remember, it's as odd as you can be. 241. Okay. All right. So I, I've seen one recommendation for eat, and I kind of like it. It was cowpea. Oh, that is good. Yes. It's very finnick. I like it. Let's, uh, let's see what it comes out as. Cowby. Cowby. That's that's kind of interesting. It's kind of interesting. I like it. Let's just. Did we? Um, I think I just said I was gonna write death thongs like that, right? That's how I would do it. But let me go double check. Do you actually include that in the, you include that in the authority with whole graffiti? <laughs> well, I should. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. Um, no, you don't. I, to me, that makes most sense. Um, the AU. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not specifically spelled out as it were. Yeah, that's fine. All right. And um, I mean, while technically it could be this, it doesn't need to be because it doesn't, it's not distinguished uh, with that. And so mm -hmm. I'm just going to do the simpler one. Um, it is interesting what it is. So like in, in Finnish, you do have this distinguished from that. And it's very interesting when you listen to Finnish, you know, power metal, as I do. And you hear them do the English diphthong I, because mm -hmm. they're very much doing the first one, which is, uh, you know, like that, which is not really how we do it. And so it's like, instead of side or side, it's side. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. And it's very distinctive. All right. We need us another noun. An active okay. little noun, a rabbitish little noun. Most important noun in the entire language. It needs to be happening right now. It's the noun for rabbit. What are we? What are we gonna do? There's so much pressure now. Yeah. Um, you know my favorite word that we've come up with, <laughs> but I feel like that's gonna be that may be a verb. I know. Yeah. That's gonna be a verb. Um, <laughs> there's so much pressure. I'm feeling we need, <laughs> we need a schwa. We need schwa, right? Okay. In the proto form. Tumpy. Um, Tumpy. Caspi, Poppy. Mm. T bar, Cena. Mm. Um, I think. The vote, 
sorry to go backwards while we're thinking about this. W. Watson asked, aren't we doing the AU to O? But wasn't the vote actually against the more progressive forms? Indeed it was. So AU just mm -hmm. stays as the diphthong. It's schwa U that goes to O. Mm -hmm. All right. What about pre-nasalize? Oh, I almost did the wrong shortcut because I was typing in a Word document. Oops. And now I need my IPA keyboard. Oh my gosh, I'm all over the place. There. <laughs> or oh wait, wait. We should we should have some some coronals because that's that's where the feeling is, right? <laughs> Ime would be the word for rabbit if that were the root. Ime. Oh, Ime is kind of cute, though. Kind of is. It's not at all oh. what I was thinking. Like, not at all what I was thinking, but it's kind of cool. Um, and there's also a suggestion. Oh, tag, now that I did it backwards. Mm -hmm. Okay, really? Really? Keyboard? You're going to do this to me right now. Inemi. But this was a suggestion. It becomes Inemi. I. Here, I'll, I'll write it out. And. No, oh, Sir Hagfish said Ime is grammar. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. It's kind of yes. cool. Yeah. All right, and then there's another, I think, suggestion that I saw floating by at some point. <laughs> um. Oh yeah, and somebody had suggested, yeah, the ngala. I'm, I'm saving that. I feel. I don't know. From these, I, I am feeling ime, even though I feel like the, the coronals would, or an S bound would have potentially made an appearance but there's something about that that for some reason i like it hmm. b no maybe it's because like you know so many languages have some sort of baba or bebe kind of sound for for kids right mm -hmm. and mama sounds for mom yeah they kind of mixes all of that together they have lots of kids <laughs> they would all just be calling each other mother <laughs> we can... and so then they all just became email i mean i don't necessarily buy that etymology but i'm liking the word so <laughs> <laughs> well the etymology was completely bunk <laughs> so you shouldn't buy it <laughs> all right how did this get supercharged Oh, I don't know, but I'm coming back to life on the stream. Like my video is starting to look normal again. Yay! Cool. Also, did you just superscript this? Did you not use the official IPA symbol? Oh, yeah, I superscripted it. Sorry. <laughs> How dare Sorry. you? How dare you? There. I know. This is why you don't let me type. This is why I just tell you. And then because if you recall, every time I type and format things, it's always, always slightly off, but not enough that you notice it at first and you don't notice it until we've copied and pasted it 80 times and then, <laughs> then you notice it. <laughs> <laughs> this right. is why I can't try. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Okay, good. We've yes. we've emerged from the mire. All right, so we have Thank we got God. four words now. So we're gonna have like you know, Chanui uh, me, right? And then we have Kalbi uh, me Niki. Okay, so here's the first series of questions. We're probably fine with this, right? Mm -hmm. Now, um, and by the way, whenever you have a verb initial language, there's always a special spot over here. 
that can have something. So just be aware of that. Um, how dare you insert that extra space? Oh, I was just going to take care of it, but you're there. Never yeah. Mind. Um, I was so excited. I was going to be like, look, <laughs> I can fix something. <laughs> so we're probably good here. But now comes the questions. So we've got, um, this, we'll, we'll say that this is like, you know, rabbit sleeps or the rabbit is sleeping and or the rabbit is asleep. I want to have all three of those things there. Mm -hmm. So this thing commands this thing. I have to feel like this is somehow separate. In other words, I'm leaning towards VOS. Um, oh, that's quite exciting. But I'm not ruling out the fact that or ruling out the possibility of something going there. Now, are you saying something going there on top of the something that would that could come before? Or that if something went there, we would get rid of the something that would come before? This is a different something. Different something. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, and so the idea here is that, uh, I mean, I guess you want to say that orders like SOV and VOS are more basic if you follow any of that uh, X bar nonsense, which of course we don't, but hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no, the idea is that um, the, you, you want this verb to have uh, direct and immediate control over the thing that is most affected by it. Right. And so since we are having state of verbs where chano can essentially it could be an active verb like it is doing asleep but it could also just be an adjective it is asleep um, and so the thing that's most affected is the thing that comes after it with something like eating the thing that's most affected is the thing that's getting eaten the tooth by the way we have the rabbit is eating the tooth because we don't have another noun so so yeah it's utter nonsense that would never actually be uttered but in, unless right now unless there is a myth about the tooth-eating rabbit, the toughest rabbit that anybody has ever seen or known. And everybody or it's has... like their boogeyman story. Yeah. Well, I was thinking more like Chuck Norris. Everybody knows about the tooth-eater. <laughs> and that would be its name, the tooth-eater. Yeah. I'm actually going to write this down. I like this. Great. Actually, can his eater. name somehow be related to Chuck? <laughs> I <laughs> <laughs> oh, love it. Okay, we're gonna hang on to that. But how how are you feeling about this? That is the thing that is most directly affected comes straight after. Do we do you like this? Are you happy with this? I'm actually very happy with it. I think it's also nice. I do like the something one and something two placements and VOS. I think is a nice. I don't know. It's it just feels good for rabbits. Okay. Um, then, thank you, thank you for that. Um, then this is what I'm thinking. We need something here to separate the two of them. We don't, we don't need, let's just say we don't need, mm -hmm. but we could have something there to separate the two. And uh, because this is just one way of doing this, right? And it would have to be something intransitive, right? Right. Because essentially what we are, embarking on here is we are embarking on the Austronesian route of everything is intransitive, right? Nice. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sure. And so when it comes to what, what do you feel here for it's like, be something like we have here, like is eaten the tooth and then Kind Something. of by the rabbit, so essentially like a, an agent marker, if you will. Um, yeah, but specifically, how? What word speaks to you here? 
what word speaks to you here? If if this is what we got here, mm -hmm. so we got this this tooth eating or the tooth getting noshed. How are we attaching the rabbit to that? What what word would give us that to you? There are a number of options, of course, but what feels right? Cause. Yeah. <laughs> Just a, a verb called cause. <laughs> cause rabbit. <laughs> So, let's be clear here. <laughs> I just snort laughed. Yes. I know. I oh, know. snorted laugh? Snort laughed. Snaff? Nothing sounds right. Snaff. Ooh. All right. Um, <laughs> look, so for something to, right, hey, mm -hmm. I copied you a superscript. How dare you unsuperscript. We have we got two options here. We got, you know what? I'm just gonna do it like this. Hey, George Corley was thinking cause too. That's not a real thing, so we're gonna delete. It's a. Oh. <laughs> it's gonna feel the pain. <laughs> come on, like well, but where did cause come from? See, that's that's the question. So you're you're jumping ahead. <sighs> oh, like what language do you know where cause is a basic word? The rabbit language. And furthermore, where uh, also I want you to remember that uh -huh. if all of these things are intransitive, then the rabbit would be the thing that was caused. Done. Do. What? Right here. Our verb. Do. Is eating tooth. Do. Rabbit. You know. Do. It. Do. <laughs> Wait. What? For what? Yes. Something to. Do. Oh. But. Like rabbit did. Like. No, but see that. Did. The same problem. You're having the same problem there. <laughs> because. Rabbit would be the agent of do not the patient we need something where rabbit is the patient so um Dang. patient but meaning it is an agent of another verb yeah so what you want are um and you'll excuse me if i get the wrong word here but i believe what you want is an unaccusative verb like come that's one option but noun i'm gonna put foot there let's let's start thinking at this point all right so two things uh i the, the two options that i put on the table here so in other words eating of the tooth comes from the rabbit so the idea is mm. you the the by using come the thing that is moving right is the thing that's most affected but it's also causing the action which makes it unaccusative i hope it could be unergative. I can't remember my terminology. I always confuse those two. But I'm pretty sure it's unaccusative. I always say what I mean and worry about terms later. Got it. Now with <laughs> foot, the the eating of the tooth happens at the foot of the rabbit. So in other words, it happens it happens at the rabbit's foot, and so in other words, the rabbit did it. So those are let's start there and then come up with some more options. Wow. So okay. Like for for so for okay. nouns or verbs, did it, has anybody checked on if I was right with unaccusative? Uh, Somebody said unaccusative and without any punctuation. So I hope that was like, yeah, you were right, unaccusative. <laughs> we'll take it. We'll take it. Okay. So now, sorry, I'm trying to think. Something like fall. Ooh, let's throw that in there. Mm -hmm. What's a, um, oh, that would be, that would, I think, just be fall or tumble would be what I'm thinking of if a rabbit tripped and went down a, a rabbit hole. Ooh. <laughs> like a. Hang on. I was going to say sink, but that was not what I <laughs> what i meant that could be a that could be a, a, a native verb for rabbits um 
right? Anyway, uh, let's 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 just let's do an actual Google search on accusative verbs. Let's let's find some examples. What do you got for us? Oh my gosh, it's so big or small. Uh, okay, so give me examples. Hey, that's my old professor, David Perlmutter. Oh, nice. He created the term. Oh no, he says that both were created by Jeff Pullum, but he was, I guess, the first one to use it in a paper. How about that? That is exciting. Okay, unaccusativity in English. So, verbs, examples. So, B, right? Where the grammatical subject is semantically a patient. Burn, fall, sink, float, flow, slip, slide, shake, slide. Slide! That's oh what God. I was thinking, not sink. Slide would be so much better than sink. Okay, let's just... Uh... Um, and then as far as nouns, um, yeah. I see that George has suggested that uh, head, mouth, or tooth might work better for the noun because rabbits don't act on stuff with their feet. Um, um, I think that was meant for like at the base of the rabbit. Yeah, um, like it... But then, you know, it's it's at the, you know, it's it's like at the rabbit's door. Um, ooh, ooh, wait, what would mm -hmm. you call the little burrow hole? So it's just at the rabbit's hole. Oh, that was not that sound. Sorry, but you know what I mean. Like, yes, I do. Okay. Um, yeah. Well, that's the mound is equally problematic, but. <laughs> <laughs> We need, maybe we should be specific and say like at the rabbit hole. Germany, no, guys, wait, that's still, no, that's still, no, that's still. Anyway, you know what I mean. Sway, going on. wave, Burrow? lie, bend, shake. <gasps> Hold on. I'm going <gasps> to, I'm just going to. Shake. Yeah. Oh, let's see like that. I'm just going to leave that and then just, let's see. Exist, happen, shine, sparkle, clink, snap, pop, smell, stink. Um, begin, start, stop, continue, end. That's too simple. Dirt is last, mm -hmm. remain, stay. Well, of course, there's... No, we'll probably use stay for something else. Um, yeah. Shake or... Do rabbits purr? Surely they make a noise, but then they would do. it be almost agentive? Or are you saying that that would be uh, something that they do just well, that, by... That's the great debate amongst, you know, cat specialists. Do cats actively purr, or is it something oh, that they choose passively to purr. happens? Well, oh, yeah. Well, but they think it's a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B. Like, no, I shouldn't mention that. I know, I I know some cats that. withhold their purrs on purpose. <laughs> Uh, okay, but I am looking to see if rabbits purr or something like it. Uh, rabbits make a sound by lightly rubbing their teeth together. <laughs> it's a very soft sound, but one you will want to listen for. And it is like cats um, in that it means they're happy and content. Rubbing their teeth? That sounds like mm -hmm. the most stressful thing in the world to me. Like... Oh my gosh, then teeth grind could be our verb. <laughs> because if it's not intentional, it just happens. All right, well let's let's work with what let's work with what we got here and think through the logic of it. Okay. Okay. So, let's let's give each one its best shot. So in other words, if tooth eating is happening at the foot of the rabbit, it means that the rabbit has done nothing to stop it. Mm -hmm. With the implication being that the rabbit actually initiated this. And so that's why I was using foot. Obviously, this would become a preposition that would probably get used somewhere else as well, maybe. Mm -hmm. Okay, head. And this is, I think the idea with head is that, um, you know, the eating of something happens at the head of the rabbit. The head is the business center of the body. And mm -hmm. so... If it's at the head of the rabbit, then the rabbit started it. Mouth. Um, it's initially the most active part of the rabbit, I guess, in terms of its volition, right? The, so at least initially, mm -hmm. rabbits can do more with their mouths 
uh, than they can with their paws. Their paws can dig, right? But their mouth, right. you know. Um, tooth, same thing. Um, mm -hmm. It's just another piece of it. Uh, paw, now this is the idea uh, that I came up with for their more advanced stage. So in other words, as their paws are becoming more hand-like, they can use them more, and so naturally they become more active. Um, and then mound, this is basically, it is at the home of the rabbit. So it's the same idea as foot. Uh, basically, if it's occurring at their home, it means they're in control of it, and therefore if they're allowing it to happen, perhaps they are actively causing it to happen. Mm -hmm. So those are the nouns. Those are the cases for the nouns. The verbs, um, uh, come is more agentive. Uh, so in other words, if you're coming, it's your choice. Um, and um, and also, so the rabbit is coming. So eating is happening, and it comes from the rabbit. Or, or it's like eating is happening, and the rabbit comes. And then why would you say that unless one was doing the other? Now, this one is much more patientive. It's almost as mm -hmm. if the first part is a noun. The whole big thing is a noun. So eating of the tooth has befallen the rabbit, or the rabbit has fallen into eating something, you know. So that's how that We need works. to use befallen more often in English. Mm -hmm. <sighs> and betide. I feel like descend, this idea would be in between those two. Yeah, and slide. We want to put those two together. Uh, but this is just my idea that they might have a, a, an entire separate word for going into a rabbit hole. Um, right. But um, slide, it's more like come in that mm -hmm. it is more agentive. You, you choose to start the slide, but then you don't necessarily control it afterwards. So it's like the rabbit is sliding into the eating. So that's pretty good. That's actually, I mean, and that's true for most verbs you start you, when you do choose to start them. You don't yeah. necessarily have control. That's why you bite your own tongue when you eat, see? Mm. <laughs> Disastrous. Quite by accident. Yeah. Now, lie has the same logic as foot and mound. That is, if you lie down for it, then you're not stopping it, which means that you might as well enable it. Mm -hmm. uh, and then... And then shake or, or, or tremble. I was thinking of like kind of a happy shaking, uh, but right. they do more of a tooth grinding thing. Yes, <laughs> which, apparently. Which apparently is a good thing. We have entire apparatuses to stop us from grinding our teeth while we sleep, and yet they do it for, all right, whatever. On purpose. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and make a noise. It oh. apparently sounds like a purr. Wow. Hmm. Huh. Okay. Um, but shaking was kind of the same thing. I imagine you have some control over the shaking and it's like, uh, it's something that's visible. So when you shake, it's something that's visible and it's almost like this thing is being shook out of you. I don't know. And you're shaking it out. So that's one other suggestion to throw on there. Tapan <laughs> uh, said hop instead of slide. And I mean, if you're hopping, you are then moving like, like come or slide um yeah it's definitely and that would be interesting like would you ever i mean their their word just for go would almost have to be like hop because that's just how they move interesting anyway that's on there too yeah so what makes the most sense to you? I am torn between, can I bold? Are you okay if I bold? Please do, please do. Oh wait, come on now. This one and this one. Um, they do need to work Those are the, the two teeth. from each, so one from each that I was more drawn to. And what's interesting is I feel like on the noun side, the mouth would have a much more agentive feel mm -hmm. because, as you had mentioned, that's how they would navigate much of their world. They could do much more with their mouths. Um, and I, I don't know, something about that speaks to me. Yeah. Um, but with the slide hop, it's like, you may choose the to initiate it, but goodness only knows what happens once once you start sliding down the burrow hole. 
Um, and so I do like that. And so those would be my options from either column. Now then, as far as whether we should go verb or noun option, um, that. Oh, um, let me just mention for prepositions mm -hmm. in general, we'll do both. It's not like we have to only have one or the other. Languages generally don't, they, they usually have both. But, but as far as like what would normally go in front of a subject, like what something to would be? Um, oh, uh, I mean, the, uh, the, remember that with, um, with our ordering, right, um, in genitival constructions, so mouth would come mm -hmm. first, the mouth of the rabbit, right, mm -hmm. because it's the grammatical head, yeah. Right. Yeah, so that's, that's fine. Um, oh, it is fine, I'm just trying to decide which I like that. Yeah, okay, sure. Um, by the way, I kind of had the same feeling as you did, um, so. Oh. Wonderful. Mouth was definitely my favorite of the nouns. Um, and I kind of liked the idea of slide. Um, for me, um, mouth is an easier fit, I think. Okay. It's kind of a slam dunk. Um, I was leaning more towards that one as well. Something about mm -hmm. having, because especially if verby things are going to also be adjectival, I don't want the end result to feel too verb heavy, if that makes sense. Okay. Um, and so I, I think that it would make more sense um, for where we're headed with some of the other structures in the language to have an a, originate from a noun. So do the mouse uh, turning into a prepositional marker. Okay, cool. <sighs> All right. Yeah, no, I have stuff to grind down teeth. Yeah, I think you're right. They will have to distinguish eating versus gnawing to grind down teeth. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know where we're going to make a note of that, but hopefully we'll remember um, when we get there. But let's, okay, so let's, um, let's think about this then. So we're going to need something for mouth. And this mm -hmm. word for mouth, um, there are two things that can happen. One, it will get, um, I mean, it's definitely going to get simplified so that it can be a preposition, but it can have two different paths of, um, two different paths of, uh, what's the word where one thing comes to another thing? Like, you know, butterfly? Like Oh, metamorphosis? No. Transformation. I was going to say evolution, but no. Butterfly. Were we both thinking of Pokemon? <laughs> no, but I can be. Because meta Metapod becomes Butterfree? Well, I mean, right, but and that's a metamorphosis, right? That's why it was called Metapod, yeah. Right. Okay, but they can have two different paths of evolution. So we can have, so uh, th three scenarios. Or we have our word for mouth, right? And it becomes mm -hmm. um, a preposition here and a regular word over here. And the, right. and the, sorry, uh, wait, I don't know. Yeah, actually, wait, you, you're not seeing me over here. You're seeing me here. You can see all of me. Um, so the prep. Yes. The. <laughs> it's good. It made sense to me. I don't know you. if anyone else understood what just happened. I yeah. totally got why, why you did that. Right on. Okay. So the preposition, um, can become further eroded, uh, due to grammaticalization than the noun itself. Um, we can do that, which. Uh, by the way, if this is ripping off a band-aid for you, no, sound change is not uniform and it doesn't happen to all the entire language at exactly the same rate. Anyway, um, so that's one route. The other route is that um, the word for mouth becomes a preposition, right? And that's kind of mm -hmm. it. And it takes some sort of an augment to become the modern word for mouth. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other option is that this word for mouth only becomes the preposition and something else evolves into the modern word for mouth. So I don't know which route we want to take, but it's something that we need to keep in mind. <gasps> they could create a new word that stands for tooth holder. <laughs> Ooh, they absolutely could. Uh, it's got some old English vibes of like bone oh, locker. Hang on. So... I didn't plan on doing noun classes, but you totally could very easily. Oh, did someone suggest that or did you just have an idea? I just had an idea, which is that since 
where we have, you know, noun, noun, the natural apposition is going to be the noun of noun, of noun, then you could have um, uh, place tooth equals a uh, modern word for mouth. Um, and then we just have um, place becoming this modern noun, you know, noun class for places. And then we have a bunch of others. Could do that. Um, I like that. And then, um, sorry, I got here and then I was looking over at the comments. Um, mm -hmm. What did you mean by the second part? Noun class for places, um, like treat them differently? Uh, no, that, that becomes one of our noun classes and then we have others. Oh, okay, oh, okay, okay. Yeah. And in terms of noun classes, are you thinking, um, what was, which language in Defiant Defiance. had all the noun classes? It was Arathian. Arathian. Yeah. Are you thinking that those kinds of noun classes? Yeah, I was thinking those kinds of noun classes, but probably not as many. Just You don't want, because wasn't there 24 or something? There was 18. There was 18. 18. Oh, I was so close. Okay. But, um, but yeah, we could do that. I do like that. And I also think that that, would it be crazy to then have more than one marker? That would be something too, because in some cases by the mouth of something wouldn't make sense. Um, well, it depends which route you want to take it. Um, okay. Or if everything metaphorically has a mouth, but I'm trying to think of like if um, if they saw you know like a God, everything I'm thinking of just is horrifying like the lightning struck the tree or something like so if they're trying to describe mm -hmm. that scenario and say tree is burned you know at the mouth of the lightning would essentially be the the subject mark yeah. would that make sense or would they have like a separate way to refer to like the agent of versus the, you know, like other things in nature that do things, but not at all choosing to. But I kind of like that metaphorical. Yeah, I, I think the idea is that the metaphor could carry it. However, but you're absolutely right. There could be two different strategies. Um, there could be two different strategies uh, entirely. So let's just idea one or oh, yeah I think my luckily my video seems to be good on the the stream but mm -hmm. like the pages document is just waiting and it's just showing up all at once like all the typing it's not there and then suddenly like two sentences are there <laughs> mm. i do type very so fast you must be i think i think your fingers are flying over that keyboard mm -hmm. um okay so there is a question mm -hmm. about whether um there will be agreement happening well uh, i mean there there can be but also like um it doesn't matter what you call it, mm -hmm. right? It just matters what we are doing. Um, so, but, um, um, so it's like at the end of it, if we, it's just a bunch of compounds that work that way, then that's fine. It's just a bunch of compounds. It doesn't necessarily mean there has to be agreement, but there probably would be different pronouns, I'm guessing. Okay, so because I feel like this construction, right? Like this mm -hmm. is eaten the tooth and then our mouth rabbit construction. That would come early on in the language. Yeah. Perhaps even before noun classes were a thing, mm -hmm. which means I think idea two would definitely work. Okay, cool. And then, and then we could play around with, because then they're like, they lost that connection between it means mouth. Now it's just marking the one doing the thing and then we'll have potentially a new word for mouth that has a, a different 
noun class and it's you know developed differently i kind of like that yeah all right so now here's here's the rabbit hole we really need a word for rabbit hole so we can just start using it here's the rabbit hole i'm yes. going down right now um we have progressive assimilation meaning that vowels assimilate to what comes before them yeah mm -hmm. yeah um so we could have an actual like case phenomena thing happening here depending on how eroded this something to is this word for mouth is um and how connected it is to the thing that follows it and how um and what its source is so like Let's just say that we had ihi, right, as our word for mouth. That's something that could get easily elided, basically. Mm -hmm. So it's like ihi would technically become ihi in the modern language, but that's just going to reduce to e. Um, mm -hmm. And then that thing just triggers stuff in words that it's attached to. Um, could do that, could do that, or, or could do something that gives us more of a fuller, you know, preposition. Um, um, yeah. Okay. So if we did something, so let's just say we did E he and it then became E. Mm -hmm. um, just looking ahead, would you then consider something like turning that preposition into a clitic and having it be like in this particular sentence, kaubiniki yime instead of iime? Um, well, I, I would kind of clitizing like a oh, I was almost, French. I, I was thinking if we went this route and it went all the way like that, mm -hmm. that, um, it would, um, just become a prefix and so if it was a word that started with e probably just wouldn't lead to anything okay yeah just be e um and so effectively like you know words that so like um you'd end up with like you know e, uh, uh, maybe coming yame right and things like that and other words like uh, i don't know and something like, you know, something that was initially ngala, so that becomes ng ngala, right? When it's uh, its own word, but when it has this I prefix coming before it, right? Hmm, oops. It becomes... Nyala. And so this just becomes uh, the absolute versus the ergative form of the verb, of the noun. And it becomes, nice. it, it just becomes a case system. Um, so that's one route we could go. Um, another route, kind of something that would help to lean into. Also, let's just, yeah, let's just. I want to hang on to those, but let's come up with, so, so now we got idea A and idea B. Mm -hmm. um, simple, simple prefix leads to case, or I'm sorry, simple um, preposition becomes prefix, becomes case system. So that's uh, idea A. And then idea B, um, here's my idea. So we lean into the VC Abugida thing and give us something like, you know, I don't know, Han becomes on, right? And then this just a mm -hmm. uh, uh, straight preposition. Um, but something that is like a VC syllable I mean, since we did get voted through by the patrons. We could also have an alternation okay. like this, and this would be a, a clitic, um, but where it's like on, on before vowels, and then ah uh, before consonants. Ooh. 
Oh, that's kind of nice. Because then that would kind of break things up. Yeah, but it would definitely allow it. It would definitely be a clitic, even though we would be in the actual writing system, we'd be writing it like it was a part of the front of the noun. It would definitely be a clitic. Nice, and I like that. Um... Oh, um, and Sacha had said something similar. If we did the ihi route, um, keeping the H before vowels and then just the just the E sound if it's before a consonant. The consonant mutations are fun too. Right now, gosh, I do like cases, and that would give some great. But I also, I mean, we did get voted through the Abugida thing, and that would be a nice way to connect um, what will become the writing system to make it feel connected. And it would make more sense for them to even come up with a writing system if we had examples like this built into the language. Yeah. Also, if this were the actual uh, form, if this were the actual form, um, remember that this is the inherent vowel. So that would mean that effectively it would be this this thing would either be written with just the letter n or it would be written as it would be it wouldn't appear at all and you just have to know yes because it's the inherent vowel oh that's kind of nice too and i feel like this marker would be something that would be easily skipped over and non-native speakers would forever be like what the heck <laughs> why do you say ah there <laughs> that's actually kind of cool that is <laughs> i think i like that all right all right so i i, I it's 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 too wicked to resist okay and this is i guess a uh, agentive uh, preposition of some kind um all right, now, um, let's see. Um, so the next question is, what do we want to do with mouth? We're going to go, um, we're going to go full, you know, classes and like do that whole thing. Or we're going to come up with uh, some other word for mouth. We're going to keep Han. Uh, what do you think? I'm kind of torn. I'm curious. I keep looking over to the comments to mm -hmm. see um, because I, I do like what noun classes do um, mm -hmm. for the conlinging process. They're fun. Yeah. Um, and finding those connections um, could be really neat. For some reason, though, mm -hmm. I'm, I don't feel like rabbits are classers. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> mm. Yeah. And so I'm just, but, so I'm torn. I'm torn. So I'm looking to see, I'm just going to say turbo because that's shorter than the full name is voting noun classes. And then like part of me was also like, maybe that would be something people could vote on because I really would like it either which way. Do you have a feeling? I, I really, um, so you have to counterbalance this with does it make sense for the language? Because mm -hmm. um, I, I really enjoy noun classes and I like making languages that have noun classes. Uh, it's a, it is, as you, as you noted, a very easy and a very fun way to fill out vocabulary. Um, but, um, one thing I'm afraid of is these sentences getting too long. I had a way that I handled that with Arathian, uh, which is that the material, uh, the very semantic and grammatical material was sprinkled across each word in the sentence so that you frequently dropped words. Um, mm. And uh, I could make sentences any length I wanted, really. Um, I don't... 
I gotta say, I'm leaning away from noun classes. Something didn't feel right for me with this particular language for classes. Mm. Yeah. So let's let's leave this as as we'll leave that aside for the time being. Yeah. Hmm. And as far as our rules went, the H would um, stay there, right? So, like, theoretically, Han could just stay Han. Yeah, it could. It could. Um, that would be the easiest thing to do. Um, yeah. So, hmm. I feel like you're thinking about something else as well, um, but it looks like some people are suggesting things along the lines of like it's animate, edible, edible, inedible, place, and rabbits. Um, what am I thinking? It becomes hen. Oh yeah, because the end. Yeah. It's got to do the raising. What the heck was I thinking? Yeah. Oh my gosh, I kind of like that hen is <laughs> possibility for. <laughs> Um, I just like that. Um, this would also become N. Because of the raisin, yes. But it would be written with the the earth vowel, no vowel marking. Um, but I think we could do other things with some of the categories people are thinking, um, whether it's some sort of agreement marker that could show up if we wanted... Um, but I also just, maybe it's because we already have it in front of us without any other markings. And then if we pop E-N in front of E-M-E, Kalbiniki and E-M-E, I mean, I just, that just sounds nice. Yeah, it really does. Oh. I like that. Yeah, it's good stuff. That that sounds very, very rabbity. <laughs> It. Whoa, whoa. Come on. I'm leaning. Is yours, is yours acting up too? It was the keyboard. Oh, okay. You're leaning back too far? Yeah. There we go. Rabbit is eating a tooth. Gabi Niki Anime. I love that. Mm -hmm. And thus begins the story of the Great Tooth Eater. <laughs> That's marvelous. All right. Let me, let me write some stuff up here. Uh, uh, let's see. The default word order for uh, time is BOS. Um, uh, so let's see. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, adjectives, relative clauses, and possessors will follow the nouns they modify and I think that we'll leave it at that for the time being oh wait well we mm -hmm. um, there are uh, prepositions as opposed to positions okay leave it at that for the time being also I wanted to comment on uh, somebody mentioned that you know cats would have uh, noun classes um, I am doing like Gler 2 for cats for the cats Thank you. Um, You're welcome. So, yeah, so don't worry. There, there are going to be noun classes there. SOV noun classes cases. That's that's my starting point for New Zealand, and then after that, I'll move on. Uh, but try to make it a good language as opposed to a crap language, which is what Zealand is. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's terrible. As a side note, putting yeah. new with Zealand together, New Zealand. That just sounds nice. <laughs> new Zealand. <laughs> Lovely. Okay. All right. So that is pretty good for what we have attempted to do. Um, let's try to map out what needs to kind of happen next. Um, I want to leave this here because I don't want to let go of this idea. Mm -hmm. 
So I'm going to leave that there. But, um, well, so let's see. We need to talk about nouns. Do they do anything? Verbs. What horrible, awful garbage do they do? Um, uh, they do all the wonderful things. Relative clauses. Um, hmm. Do they need something? Just pronouns. What will they be? Um, and then let's have, have a little addendum here. So, what do you want to tackle first? <laughs> um, that is a great question. Um, now, by nouns, do they do anything? Um, I'm assuming you're asking things like cases. Throw that in there. Also, number. Mm. Uh, yes, number would be a good thing to to think about. Um, oh. Okay. Yeah. Oh, interesting. VJ has suggested that rabbits speak a simpler language than some of the others. I do like that. And of course, simple is always only simple when you first look at it and then mm -hmm. you dig into it and it's super complex by the way all these simple pieces are put together um so yeah i think that they should definitely have number um i'm trying to think from a rabbit's point of view mm. how do you feel about plural being the default and you have to specify if you mean one uh well that isn't what we discussed with grass that is exactly correct. That, but that was an hour ago, I think, and my brain forgot that. <laughs> You're absolutely right. <laughs> Scratch that. <laughs> One place um, where we could see little bits of classes um, is our sources for, for plurality. So we, we did say that we wanted, uh, we wanted a word for blade of grass. Yes. And then we would need uh, blades of grass if we were doing plural. Um, mm -hmm. So we could come up with different pluralization strategies based on the form of the noun, mm -hmm. or based on the semantics of the noun. I think that would make sense. I, I like having the idea of um, different abilities with ways. Of course. Let's see. Um, um, and Mateus had asked actually about reduplication, how we feel about that. Um, that, that can work, uh, but not for everything. Mm -hmm. Funny thing is that the, the thing that I think of for what we would want for grass is plural. I would want mouthful of grass, but we've already used mouth. <laughs> <laughs> that is so freaking cute. But you know, if mouths are how they're going through the world, that would be in a lot of places. But yeah, that, that would be, I guess, maybe a bit much if we did that. Mm -hmm. Um, what about unless unless hang on what if there was a um i'm thinking of um um you know when right you know what i mean right um okay <laughs> Uh, Amanyar, help me. Amanyar. Amanyar nouns. Ergativity. It's funny because this is important because it's not even going to be the thing. It's going to be the thing that leads me to the thing. Um, animacy. So you know how often there are animacy hierarchies, right? 
<laughs> yes. Okay, but what if there was a hierarchy amongst um, uh, closeness? I, you know, when I can, the iconicity hierarchy. Did you read this Ooh. paper by Heyman? No. Okay, it's the only one I'm going to recommend. It's so good. Uh, okay. Heyman, 1984. H a i m a n. And it's it was so good. Um, but what if plurality was something that was closer to the noun than, you know, case, you know, case and that prepositions and stuff like that. Right. So prepositions don't, you know, glom, but plurality, plurality gloms. Okay. And so therefore going back to our example sentence, the ain would remain, um, its own word and then ime if it were more than one rabbit we would have like a prefix there yes and specifically mm -hmm. we can have our kind of like n mutation prefix i mutation prefix for for plurality so Whoa. Mm -hmm. okay uh, I see the, um, so the in mutation prefix comes from Han. Okay. And so you got Han, it's the same thing. It's the same construction, but it results in two different things. So Han, when it's, um, Han, um, Han, I want something other than Ime. I need another, what is our... Of course, it starts with an N. Something that starts with a T. We need a noun that starts with a T. So we need to come up with a noun. And then we need to make it start with a T. Well, I'm, I'm fairly certain that um, Tulu would be a blade of grass. Ooh, 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 I like that. It's probably coming out as Tulu in the, um, in the modern, yeah? Actually, let's yes. let's call it tool. Just for mm -hmm. a heck of it. Oh, to get that, yes, and then yeah. we'll do the do duplication. Okay, yeah, no change, no change. Okay, tool. All right, so han tulu becomes uh, when it's um, you know in tulu, right? However, mm -hmm. when it's uh, so that's like um, when it's the um, when it's the case. Except. However, mm -hmm. when it's the, the noun, it's the first part that gets the stress. So it's uh, on Tulu, right? Uh, okay, so like in the older oh, form, because shit. it would turn into an, right? So, Instead of Han, be Han Tulu. Um, actually, if it's getting stress? No, wait, it no, would it, go it, to the A, Han Tulu, right? Let's see what happens. Because the nasal raising. Yeah, so Hantulu would become Hendulu, which would become Hendulu, which could become. Uh, nobody, nobody, nobody look at me. Nobody look at me. Hendulu, I don't know. <laughs> It couldn't do that. I'm sorry. Wow. That's one hell of a journey. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking. It can't do that. It can't do that. I don't know why it's... Oh, man. But you know what I'm saying? Like, I was just thinking... I do. I do uh, see that. But then... And then if... I mean, because they would have... They would... Some sort of reduction would be called for. Hmm. Interesting. Um, I simultaneously like it and don't like it. Okay. 
that's where I am. Where are you? I'm, I'm at the same problem of here we are doing stuff to stressed vowels that shouldn't be happening to stressed vowels. That's where I'm at. Right. <sighs> that's where I'm at. Because if there is going to be reduction, reduction when it's its own word it, in terms of it will be reduced just in the sentence structure it makes sense to me. Um, I... Another yeah, option. I don't think we should mess with that. Another option prefix as much is this edulu. The n drops out. I don't know. <laughs> because the n and the t. Yeah, so it would be something that only happened with the plurals, though. So, one blade, two, two, a do. I like that better than the other option. Yeah. Where did we? Oh, no, wait, that was only before. Never mind. Never mind. Um,. I was seeing if there are any suggestions. <laughs> yeah, I know. To add. <laughs> oh, I don't know where the mutation hallelujah came in. I wonder if that was from before or if this is the mutation they were happy about. Um, I mean, the only other thing is that we say this the stress is the same but it just gloms better so so it's on tulu which becomes you know uh hendulu which becomes hendulu which becomes dulu or could do that but i'm i like having the a prefix it's kind of cool i yeah and then having just that change, I mean, obviously only happening where it would be necessary slash able. Would the N always disappear while voicing whatever comes after it? Or would we at some points get in as a full prefix? I don't know. Uh, well, um, I mean, the theory there was just that it disappears just because it gets said a lot. So this mm -hmm. would be something that only happens to that prefix. Um, for something like ime, I mean, we wouldn't take this plural. You wouldn't have a mouthful of rabbits. But presuming that you had this stage, right? Anime, right? Mm -hmm. And it could stay there. Maybe it could become an ime. But you'd have anime. I just thought of something else. Okay. Question. I'm going to make up a word um, on the spot. Totally going to work. Cool. <laughs> Which means it's never going to work. Okay. So let's say we start with um, something like Han Ali. Let's say there's. Okay. Yes, there's no nasals. Okay, but the word alu, if it's by itself, if it's singular, would become, make sure I'm still on my right keyboard, would become alu, right? Alu, yeah, right. Correct. But this would receive the stress in the plural, so are we saying then that this would become um, An alu. a alu or... Well, with an N. In alu. So the a uh, would be preserved in those cases. Yeah. So in alu. It would be. That's kind of cool. I guess I can feel better about that. Because it would affect not only yeah not only quite a few consonants, but um, all the central vowels would be affected with how they were in the stressed or unstressed position. Yeah. All right. Okay. Okay. Cool. I, I can be I can be happy with that if you can be happy with that. 
I think I could be happy with that. I want to just see, like, okay, so in that case, we would get, like, in Enalu. Sure. In Edu. That's fine, right? In, what's our word for rapid again? I should remember this. In Enalu. And Nedulu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that N really needs to disappear. Um, this could have, this could be what eventuated it, because otherwise you'd have N Nedulu. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, I guess at that point... Okay, so you're saying the N disappears to get rid of stuff like that, but then we still potentially get it in here... So then my question, because then, because this is the... Oh, but but here's... Oh. No, 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 because uh, it's... Um, uh, this is just CVCV. This one is CVC. Right? Okay. And then something. Yeah. Okay. So that's, that's a theory. Um, how, how would you feel about this just being pronounced nenime <laughs> instead of enenime um we we certainly could um i mean it it doesn't matter so much at least in the writing system right because it'll be the same right. either way mm -hmm. um yeah, it would be okay. So it'd be kind of like our shortening. Like, do we say, and uh, I think yeah, actually, this is this is when I think you'll see the difference. Um, hold on. So what's our? We have. All right. Yabiniki and Nime. But. Huh? Yes. Yes. Done. All right. Yes. Good stuff. I like that. Okay. All right. Whew. So before we forget too much, <laughs> so we have, um, let's, okay. Uh, here, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to write something here so that I, I, I remember we have our, our word for, for rabbit. Word for sun has to be E something. Word for moon has to be U something. The word for star has to be a uh something. And then the word for earth has to be a uh something. Uh, so just, I want to remember that. Um, don't need that. Um, oop. Um, we don't need this anymore. Uh, I do want that. I do want that so we remember. And then so for, let's put it right above the sun, moon, star, earth. Uh, plurals. I can't believe I just said that. <laughs> plurals. <laughs> okay. Um, so for eating, eating things, or eating things, we have mouthful plural that is uh n oh or, that is perfect yeah now let's discuss we need plurals for rabbits creatures mm -hmm. um and non eaten things and then just ask if we want to do others um, these, uh, uh, and then uh, a question uh, we want to do optional plurality with these things basically being classifiers uh, optional uh, uh, that is optional plural classifiers okay um, yeah 
So that's where we're at at this point. Yes. So, um, and then one of these, uh, one of these can have reduplication. So you can have reduplication for one, and we'll figure out how that's going to work later. Um, but um, how do we want to turn this into a poll? <laughs> that was actually what I was wondering. Um... That's a really good question. <laughs> I suppose <laughs> to I turn can... that into like column A, B, C, and D. Um, I suppose one, we could well, just one... make it David's oh. problem. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Um, one would be like this question mark portion because we could give different options and have them vote um, on whether there is another option or what that one is. We could also just straight up ask which which one of these, other than obviously this one is done. But which one gets reduplication? Which one makes more sense um, for to have some sort of reduplication strategy? Yeah, the wild thing is I want more of an open-ended question. That's more open-ended. And that mm -hmm. doesn't work for a poll. No, it really doesn't. Mm -hmm. um, is there a way to do write-in options? <laughs> Other, please respond. Yeah. Um, I don't think they do that on there, though, do they? Yeah. Oh. I'll figure out, I'll figure out how this is going to work. Because I'm also curious, like, what, because, I mean, this one makes sense with the mouthful of eaten things. Um, but I am curious to see what we end up doing for these other ones. What, what will be that key factor of quantifying? <laughs> nice mm. nice mm, probably but uh I'll, I'll figure something out there i'll do something <laughs> um right Oof. actually suggests that we just um put up a post and let them write responses okay and so instead of an actual quote poll just write a post and then um, oh, fourth class residue. Interesting. Um, but yeah, that may be an option. And then we can see like what common themes we have and, and bring that to the table next time. Kind of like Alu for raindrop. And a mouth and a mouthful of raindrops for rain. It's kind of cool. Oh my gosh, that's kind of sweet. Because mm. then I just imagine the little bunny with their mouth up catching rain. Oh, shoot. I think we just got to do that. Let's write that down yeah. real quick. Yeah. They're just such a sweet little thing. Yeah. And we'll, we'll come up with something funky to turn that into a verb. Um, of course, Alu is going to become Alu, right? Right. But when it's plural, yeah. and it's then, Alu. Yeah, and Alu. And then... And then, and then, um, yeah, and then, that's beautiful. Cool. All right. Um, oh, such a cube says a Google form can be linked on Patreon. Um, Oh, that was suggested also by Carrie up above. Oh, yeah, Google Form, yeah, that could work. Now, but here's here's the problem, though. What I, what in my ideal world, people will suggest things, and then mm -hmm. others will vote on those suggestions. So the suggestions right. become options. Uh, the only place I've seen where you can do that of all places is Facebook. Right. It's like somebody can just make a suggestion and other people can say, oh, yeah, that was a good one and vote for that. That's the weirdest thing that only Facebook can do such a thing. <sighs> um, okay, sure. Oh, well, there is, we can, I think we can, surely they can too, uh, like comments to post and whatever ones get the most likes. There we go. There we go. That's how you do it because you can only give one like. Yes. Yes. All right. All right. I, okay. I've got it. So I know. we have this. I know how to do it. Perfect. Okay, cool.
Yay. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you for coming for these early steps. It's, you know, painful sometimes. But I think ultimately it's really grammar. You know what I mean? It, oh, it's so grammar. <laughs> it's so grammar that it's grammar. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Love it. Anyway. Well, Jesse, we've Come done man. it. We've, we've done it. Um, we have. Um, I, um, oh, you know what? Sorry. Uh, Meridian had asked me, she wanted me to, to do something for you. Can I just, um, can I just get the last four of your social? And you know what? For Meridian. <laughs> <laughs> I will whisper the numbers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. Matthias. Yeah. The, you're going to get a whole bunch of language documents. Uh, um, April 1st, <laughs> not, no joke. They're coming. Oh <laughs> yeah. First thing I do after we stop is I make a PDF. So you'll get this, this PDF as well as all the others. You'll see all the steps. Um, you know, if you're a Patreon at that level, which you are anyway, but, uh, but yeah, I don't know. Like, I don't even know what to say. Jesse say, give us our, our send off. <laughs> my our head. send off. Our my, send off. My head is just is. so. May all of your Edulu be drenched in the Enalu. Kaubiniki <laughs> <laughs> Enime. Oh. Don't forget the rabbit that ate the tooth. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Bye.